Good afternoon. I'm Donna Arnett, past president of the American Heart Association here in Phoenix for the Epi Lifestyle Conference. And I'm honored to have with me the Cannell Award winner this year, Dr. Don Lloyd-Jones. So Don, congratulations, first of all. It's quite an honor. And I think it's particularly an honor for you because didn't you get your start at the Framingham Heart Study? Yes, thank you so much, Don. It's great to be here with you. And, and um, yeah, you know, it's a huge honor, of course, and, and uh, it's particularly special to me, um, having been mentored by Dr. Cannell at, uh, at Framingham for the seven years that I was there, first as a fellow and then as a staff researcher. And uh, I'll, I'll share a brief anecdote. You know, my, literally my first day as a fellow at Framingham, uh, Bill came in and plunked his, his uh, self down in the chair next to my desk and he said, you know, there are a few things that I've been trying to get around to to work on that I just haven't had time to do, and literally reeled off 10 solid gold research projects, um, two of which I was able to accomplish while I was there. Um, and, and he was just that kind of a guy. He was just a, a mensch, uh, just a yeah. lovely, lovely man. A big thinker, too, and he yes. really had his pulse on the field. And when we think back through all of the discoveries that Framingham has produced, he was the driving force. No question about it. So this week at the meeting, we are learning a lot about cardiovascular health and you know, you and I were on the original paper defining cardiovascular health many years ago and it's really shocking to me and, and in a good way that Life Simple 7 has caught on and is, is such an important part of this meeting. Uh, it seems to be enduring, doesn't it? Yeah, you know, I, I think um, the topic of my talk uh, is, uh, is really to Look, pa look back at the past decade uh, in which we've had this formal definition of cardiovascular health and to understand a little bit about where it came from, but I think it's been really exciting to see where people have taken this new concept. Once you have a formal definition, I think, you know, we've seen it, this, this paper that you and I were on was, has actually been cited 2,300 times by other scientific papers. And, and um, people have taken it in very interesting directions. So this will be an opportunity uh, to kind of briefly review some of the outcomes that have been associated with the cardiovascular health definition, many of which are not about cardiovascular disease outcomes, but about other health outcomes as well. Um, and then also to understand what are some of the determinants, some of the correlates. And I'm going to spend some special time, I think, um, really thinking about what are the mechanisms. Why is cardiovascular health as a package maybe more than just the sum of its parts? And, and how is it working through molecular things like epigenetics? Uh, as well as subclinical and then ultimately clinical event triggering. So it, it, it's a lot of fun and, and uh, it's been great to uh, kind of reflect on this past decade, understand where we're going for the next decade. So it's interesting that we have heard some disturbing news this week about how cardiovascular death rates are increasing um, and how much do you think our poor cardiovascular health in the U.S. is contributing to that. Well, as you've said here at the meetings, you know, this has been a, a constant refrain is, is this link between cardiovascular health and, and so many of the other outcomes that are occurring, not least the disturbing trends in cardiovascular deaths. You know, I, I think the data continue to show us that these modifiable risk factors that compose the package of, of cardiovascular health and Life Simple 7 are really central. Um, no question, of course, that genes set the stage, but there's so much that we can do uh, within the framework of, of cardiovascular health and Life Simple 7 promotion, I think, that um, starting in early life, launching people into better trajectories, paying attention to those health behaviors early, setting our kids up to succeed, um, we could have a profound impact in lowering disease burden and improving health in the population and maybe achieve those 2030 AHA impact goals. Yes, absolutely. Um, and so if you could put on your genie hat and wish for cardiovascular health for America, <laughs> what would be the one thing that you would stress most? Yeah, you know, I think that um, it, it sort of depends on what your outcome is, but time and time again, as we look at the population uh, burden or uh, lack of success with cardiovascular health, it really seems to stem from our diet. Uh, almost no one has an ideal cardiovascular health uh, diet. and. Um, and uh, if we could even move the needle in a small way on that, it would have a, a really important impact downstream, I think, of course, on weight, um, but of course, on also blood pressure, cholesterol levels, mm -hmm. uh, blood glucose levels. And so, you know, if, if you could magically engineer or perhaps through smart policy, uh, tilt the playing field towards, toward, towards healthier default choices, I think diet would be the place that I would really try to put my, uh, my money. I actually agree with you. 
Well, anything else you'd like us to know about your presentation? Well, you know, I, I, again, I think it's just such a treat to, to be able to honor Bill Cannell in this way. And, and uh, you know, if you trace the threads of where cardiovascular health and its definition came from, no doubt it goes back through Jeremiah Stamler and Bill Cannell and so many of the other leading lights in our field. And it's just uh, it's a real pleasure to be able to celebrate that. Well, thank you. Thank you for being here. And I look forward to your lecture. Thank you.